Good afternoon, adventurers. Well, hello there. So we are all done for the day. We decided to do kind of a different type of video for and you guys. And a shower for once. Yes, but we're just chilling for the rest of the evening. We got some wine. We mm -hmm. made ourselves a little custom charcuterie board. Really, it's just because we ate breakfast so late and it's getting close to dinner, but we're freaking hungry. Yeah. So you guys know that we have been working on restoring this vintage RV that is behind us. And throughout the process, actually a ton of you guys have been sending us pictures of your own restoration projects that you're doing. Some just as ambitious as ours, some even more ambitious. <laughs> yeah, some yeah. of them scare us. A bunch of you guys also said that you are actually seriously thinking about undertaking a project like this. Now that we are well along in our renovation, we wanted to make this guide to show you guys what to look for if you are looking to do a vintage renovation like us. Mm -hmm. My dad's driving a tractor in the background if you're wondering what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Tip number one is to first and foremost decide what level renovation you are interested in doing. Are you going for just a remodel of a camper? Are you going for a complete rebuild? Basically, are you just wanting to maybe get some new fabric in there, maybe change out the sinks, or are you going to do like us and you want to completely redo everything? I actually saw one person that is completely rebuilding this entire area of the RV. <laughs> So you can go that far if you want to. And now our biggest tip, if you are going to do a full renovation, strip it all down, build it all back up, buy one that's already gutted. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big things that we wish we had done is because we spent so much time gutting this thing. We were fine doing all this work now, but it took us so long to gut the thing yeah. to get it to this point. Basically, if we could do it again, we would go out and find one that had the outside that we wanted that was already gutted on the inside. And don't be afraid if there is some mold and stuff on the exposed pieces because it's really easy to fix yeah. once it's all gutted. Next up is something that we didn't even come close to considering, and that is the wheel sizing. Older RVs, um, ones in the 70s, and I think even in the 80s, a lot of times will have half size tires. So these tires are 16 and a half inch, which most modern RVs aren't gonna have that. There are still some tire options out there, but they are few and far between. So yeah. it makes it very difficult hunting down the tires for these things, and they cost a little bit more. Yeah, if you guys remember from when we originally purchased this old gal, it was quite a fiasco trying to get new tires for this thing. Our next tip is to look for signs of mold and decay, and you do that by, well, many ways, but mm -hmm. walking around the floor and just seeing if there are any soft spots, especially around doorways, around at the bottom of windows, around appliances that could potentially leak like water heaters or water tanks in the bathroom, around the toilet, just do the squish test. Yeah. If the floor gives a lot, likely the wood and the subflooring are rotten. You can also just open the cabinets and poke all the walls that you can possibly poke and just see if there's any visible signs of mold or mildew, but also just push it because sometimes you can't see it but you can feel it. You might be okay with fixing a little bit of mold damage but if you're just really thorough with the mold check you'll at least know what you're up against which we did not know. We knew of a little bit of mold but there was a lot more mold in this thing than we realized. Yeah. Thankfully it's all fixed now. Another way to preliminary check to pre pre preliminarily? <laughs> that is an awkward word to say. Preliminarily check for mold is to do a little smell test. So if you walk in and it smells pretty musty or kind of yeah. like an old house odds are the carpet probably needs to be replaced and there is likely some mold hiding in some of the crevices mm -hmm. even if you can't see it speaking of the smell test oh yeah this cheese is passing moldy in all the right ways this is the good kind of mold right here also i'm very proud of my charcuterie board this farmhouse cheddar actually pairs perfectly with this red wine that I got from Bright Cellars. You guys know we actually really love drinking wine, but it's not like we know that much about wine. But do you have to know a lot about it to enjoy it? 100% confirmed, no. If you haven't guessed by now, this video is sponsored by Bright Cellars. We actually took their super simple wine quiz. It's seven questions and they asked us about food and taste preferences and based on those responses, they curated a box of wine just for us and delivered it directly to our door. We've never been so happy to receive a package. One of the coolest things is that they send you these handy wine education cards so you can learn all about the delicious bottles they send you and impress all your friends when they come over for wine and cheese night. Oh my gosh, this cab is fantastic. 2018, lots of berry notes, full bodied, and um, baking spices. Totally getting baking spices. I am currently sipping on Wondering Giants, which is a delicious red blend from California. It is my favorite of the bunch. And I'm sipping on Jumble Sale, which is a full bodied red that pairs best with one pot beef stroganoff and Tuesday night dinners. I love that description, by the way. We should have prepared some <laughs> beef stroganoff for this. Oh my God. It's not Tuesday. Tuesday's coming. I'm going to save this bad boy. Bright Sellers hooked us up with a discount. 
just for you guys. 50% off a six bottle box. All you have to do is go to the link in the description below or type in the link that is on the screen right now, take the quiz and then get your first six bottle box sent to you. So if you're like us and it takes you about half an hour to pick out the perfect bottle of wine when you're at the grocery store, let Bright Sellers do it all for you and send you the perfect bottles, six bottles. And you can just focus on what you do best, drinking. I feel like we've cheers 50 times. <laughs> all right, this is over. just so fun. <laughs> The next tip is to just thoroughly check all the seals on the outside of the RV, especially if it's an older RV, but you can have problems with the seals even in RVs that are only 10 years old. What you wanna do is just go along all these trim pieces, see if there's spots where water might be leaking in back there, see if the butyl that's spewing out or the caulk that's spewing out is just breaking right off, then you know that you probably have some problem spots and it might be something that needs to be replaced. And definitely check those seams for obvious patches because likely that means they found some leak there mm -hmm. in the past and tried to patch it themselves which could mean that maybe they didn't take care of anything that was hiding in the walls also check all the uh screws and stuff on the outside yeah. if they're rusted that probably means that water is somehow seeping into the rv yeah. there were a handful of spots where these screws i think a lot of these are just the original screws so water just kind of seeps in back there but we're replacing all these with stainless steel EPDM washer head screws. So they are going to be watertight, baby. Yeah. After you've checked all the seams around the RV, the next tip is to go right up on the roof and check all the seams on the roof because those are a whole beast of their own. They use a different type of sealant up there. Roofs go through a lot of wear and tear. So a lot of times they'll be done and then redone and then redone. I think people redo it every like five or 10 years mm -hmm. at the very least. So there's a lot to look for up there. You basically want to look in for spots where the rubber has been cracked or if it's fiberglass check for any kind of cracks in the fiberglass. Look at all the seals around all the vents and the fans and the solar panels if it has it. All that stuff needs to be checked and most likely it's going to need to be redone which is a very doable project. We yes. still have to do it but we've got an, a plan to do it. It's not that hard and most of these RVs are going to have seams on the roof just like they have on the side so make sure you check those very thoroughly. And if you're purchasing a Class C like us or any vehicle with forward-facing windows really check those out because like ours they tend to leak pretty profusely over time. A lot of people actually patch them up completely. Mm -hmm. Or you can do like us, take the old one out and put a custom one in that hopefully will never, ever, ever leak again. An obvious one is to take the vehicle on a test drive if it's not a pull behind. But more specifically, try to cold start the engine because a lot of times on these older vehicles, you might have to sit there for 10 minutes trying to get it to start up in order to get it running. Ours takes a couple of tries, but usually within like 30 seconds or so, you can get it started. But if it took 10 minutes every single time, that would be a nightmare. Next tip, test everything. Especially if you aren't planning on gutting your RV and you wanna keep a lot of the furniture and appliances, try everything. Pull things open, test out the couches, fold everything down, get up in the overhead cab, pull up the toilet lid. If anything's hooked up, try to turn on water. Owners will tell you most of the story, but maybe not all of the story, or maybe they don't know about certain things that are broken, uh, especially if they haven't used it in a while. And don't feel bad about taking a lot of time because mm -hmm you're potentially going to be owning it next. If there's a generator, make sure you try that out. Mm -hmm. If there's propane, make sure you turn on the line and test all the different propane devices that are on the inside. Flip on lights, flip on fans, anything that will turn on yeah. and can be turned on, turn it on. And test all the outlets too, don't yeah. forget that. And after doing that, our next tip would be to figure out what needs to be repaired. If you find anything that's broken or that you have to replace, just get an idea of that and then do some research if you have the time because some of these older RVs have a lot of custom appliances, custom pieces, custom doors, custom windows, custom wheels, all these things that you might not think about and you'll think, oh, of course I can find a replacement for that. Luckily between eBay, Amazon and private sellers, you can typically fill in the gaps, but not always. But just because you find something that doesn't work doesn't necessarily mean it's a deal breaker. It just means it's something that you'll have to fix or live with. The next tip can be one of the most expensive things to fix or to update on your vintage RV, and that is the paint. Try to decide what can be cleaned off versus what actually has to be repaired or completely repainted. Before we even found this RV, we were calling places in St. Louis and just asking them, what would it take to repaint this RV or that RV? And we got quotes as high as like $10,000 to repaint the RV. We never thought that that would be potentially the most expensive part 
of restoring this old gal. Oh, yeah. But paint can be so expensive. And a lot of these older RVs, the paint has deteriorated a bit over the years being out in the sun. So it's faded a lot. So you can't really match it so well. Yeah, so basically repaint it or have a bunch of splotchy stuff on your yeah. RV from where you repaired it. Also make sure you check for dents, especially if you have one that's corrugated like this, which just means this pattern in the aluminum. When there are dents in this, I think it's gonna be really hard for them to repair that at the body shop. At the very least, they'll have to take the panels completely off like we've done right here before they'll be able to do that. Yeah. But if the RV that you're buying is fiberglass, then you basically just wanna look for any sort of punctures and scratches and stuff like that because it doesn't really behave the same as aluminum, obviously. It scared me for some reason. Did it? <laughs> Ding, I was like. Uh, what was that? <laughs> I don't know, I was just in the zone. <laughs> There's a lot of noises out here right now. That's how it always happens, right? When you go to film, it's like noises everywhere. Mm -hmm. For our final tip, you're gonna get. Ugh. For our final tip, you're gonna have to get a little down and dirty. Get under your old gal. To see what's going on up in there. Yikes. <laughs> and that is to look for signs of rust and punctures. From our experience, the wheels kicked up, they either exploded or kicked up a bunch of debris, which punctured our wheel wells. There was no sort of mud flap behind, at least our back tires. So it was just throwing all this water up into all of these holes, ruining the wood all around the wheel well. It was kind of a mess. So yeah. we recommend getting under there. And don't just kind of peer down and take a quick peek. You need to like get a roller or just Arm lay down some cardboard, crawl up under that thing and take a look at everything that you can possibly see to see if there's any sort of hole or anything that looks like it's gonna be trouble down the line. When we eventually got under our RV, we realized there not only were there big holes in the wheel well, there were also rusted out spots in the floor where you could actually see up to the wood that was our subflooring. Yeah. So which completely is, exposed yeah. floor wood. <laughs> <laughs> floor wood, yep. Floor wood. For those of you who are crazy enough to undertake this sort of renovation, I hope these tips help. <laughs> yeah, basically look for anything, everything. All the things. Look for it all. And yeah. then you'll probably still be surprised. Yeah. And yeah, just know that there's gonna be something that you miss. That's why eventually you just, when you see the right one and if it feels right, just do it, you know? It's or don't do fun. it, I don't know. <laughs> you learn a lot, it's a lot of stress, but it's gonna be a labor of love and it's yeah. gonna be your beautiful creation at the end of the day. We forgot to mention, if you guys have any tips of your own or if you've done your own remodel, leave a comment below. Tell us the whole story, tell us all about it. Links to pictures if you have them. Yeah, and if you have any helpful tips that we left off that we should have said or that we should know. Yeah, or if you want to expand on any of the tips that uh, we gave earlier because this is not an exhaustive list. Obviously, there is so much stuff that we could cram in here, but maybe yeah. we'll make a, fo a follow-up video at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. All right, goodbye, adventures. We'll see you on the road.